All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We have another episode of the Rocket Racing Podcast, quote unquote. Um, we have Zick back with us again. Uh, if you don't know who Zick is, then I mean, you might be living under a rock if you're in the rocket racing community, but uh, he's a top 10 racer uh, on the leaderboards. He has a few world records. We had him on the, again, podcast uh, a couple weeks ago, but we're going to dive more into a little more about uh, Zick and his, uh, his gaming background, and we'll dive in on the state of rocket racing. And we just had an update, uh, I guess, last week now. So we're going to talk about uh, it was the first major major uh, update to rocket racing so we'll touch on that a bit and uh so just sit back and uh let's bring on zick how you doing man i'm doing great thanks for having me blair I'm glad to be here yeah thank you for coming on really appreciate it um so you just heard the intro so we're just going to touch a little bit more on uh on yourself than we did in the last time that was a lot about strategy and uh and what we've seen in the game so far but uh mm -hmm. How uh, how did you get into rocket racing? Give us a little backstory on your gaming background and what led you to rocket racing. Yeah, so all my life I've been playing racing games. Uh, was my first game ever was Gran Turismo Three, so I grew up on them. Um, I've played all types of racing games, both you know simulation and arcade. Um, so I've always been familiar with them. Um, always been on and off them uh, throughout my life. And so whenever I would get a new racing game, I'd always be able to pick it up and pretty much, you know, be able to get in and enjoy it and play it um, and perform decently at the very least at it. Um, and so, you know, with Rocker Racing, it wasn't any different. Um, Rocker Racing came out um, at a time where I was open to trying out a new game. Um, it's also been a while since I played any racing game. Um, I think the, the other one I did was uh, The Force of Motorsport that came out recently. Um, but again, I was kind of getting a little bit bored of that. I was open to trying something else, something else out. And Rocket Racing is a complete, you know, opposite of a of a Forza game. Um, and yeah, I, I decided to pick it up. I, I I told myself I was going to just try it out, just see how it is, um, you know, play it for for fun, um, see how much potential it has. And you know, once I picked it up, um, started doing ranked matches. And noticed that I was, uh, you know, performing well. I was able to pick it up quickly. And so I kind of just kept playing. I kind of, you know, got the addiction going <laughs> for it. <laughs> and um, I just couldn't really put it down. I saw that I was able to climb the ranks. And from there, I just said, all right, I'm going to dedicate a lot of time to this. And that was pretty much it from there. Um, something I'll bring up is that uh, I do have experience in games like Trackmania. Um, the one I have the most experience in was a game called Trackmania Turbo, uh, which was a game that came out um, years ago, uh, mid-2010s. Um, it was kind of like their experimentation phase uh, with Trackmania. They were trying something else, something new. And the game is probably, it, it's probably the most similar game that I played to Rocker Racing. Um, because in Trackmania Turbo, you would obviously go through these you know created tracks and it's a, it's a time trial game ultimately um but in that track mania you would also have a turbo bar similar to what we have in rocker racing um where you would build up a boost bar and you could use that boost at any point in time throughout the race um and so because i already had a lot of experience in that game in the past um rocker racing kind of reminded me of it and i was able to kind of understand what to look for in rocker racing um, and what to be prepared for. And so I think I had kind of a little bit of an edge or a helping hand getting into rock racing compared to some people who may have not played any games like that before. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I had never heard of, uh, track media turbo until, uh, just a couple of days ago, but, um, those mechanics that, uh, that you just shared in turbo in track mania turbo, it seems like it would, uh, transition over pretty well into rocker racing. Uh, maybe I should have played and I would have been maybe a little better at this game. But uh, um, do you have any experience in the in the Fortnite world, considering Rocket Racing is in the Fortnite realm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Fortnite itself, um, you know, I, I played the game probably the most when it first came out. Um, I was playing it for at least a couple of weeks when it first came out because it was the big hype, you know. Um, Fortnite's always been the hype, I guess, but... Um, 
especially when it first came out is when I mainly played. Ever since then, I've pretty much been on and off the game. I never really got in the Battle Royale seriously or any other game mode. Um, so Fortnite has always been in the background for me. Um, but with them coming out with these other game modes, Rocket Racing included, um, you know, that that uh, kind of interests me a little bit more than the Battle Royale mode. Plus, it's new, so, you know, got to try it out. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and then, yeah, I play I play Fortnite solely for Rocket Racer right now. I don't play it for Battle Royale. Um, the only time I ever get on Battle Royale anymore is if I'm ever playing with um, close friends of mine that want to play. Yeah, and yeah. We'll play for a little bit, so, yeah. Yeah, my Fortnite days are over. I uh, I put quite a few hours in Fortnite. I was, uh, you know, half decent before all the young ones came and just overtook all my capabilities so i can't build worth a crap now but uh um epic ran an absolutely brilliant marketing campaign you bring out orgy fortnite and then at the end of that bam introduce these new game modes and uh, just suck everyone back in you know mm -hmm. um so rocket racing also you know has its you know it takes its assets i guess from rocket league there's not any mechanics that really transfer over from rocket league uh do you have any experience in rocket league yeah, so Rocket League, uh, another game I also played uh, when it first came out. I remember when it came out, it was free for uh, PlayStation Plus, uh, yeah. which helped it, you know, immensely. I think the player count, which is absolutely insane. Um, but I did play that uh, when it first came out. Rocket League is another game that I've been on and off on, so I do have a good amount of experience in it. I think the highest rank I ever hit in Rocket League was Champ One, um, and that was as far back as like maybe two years ago i think it's been at least two years since i've played at rocket league um serious at all maybe even since i've ever loaded up the game once so yeah it's been a while but i do have a good amount of hours in the game so i'm familiar with it yeah i got about uh i got about two thousand hours in rocket league and i'm still a resident champion one player so <laughs> uh you know i just just can't figure it out but this podcast is about rocket racing um so the game's been out for almost two months, about seven weeks now. We'll hit our two month anniversary uh, in about, I guess, 12 days or so. Um, from your perspective, what are the game's biggest strengths and challenges at the moment? Yeah, so I think the best thing Rocket Racing has going for it, in my opinion, is that it's a great game for casual players. Um, it's a great game for anyone to just pick up, play for you know an hour or two and have a good time either alone or with friends um and they don't really need to think twice about it you know they're getting enjoyment out of it i'm assuming as long as they enjoy racing games um and with all the mechanics that are in the game with using the boost and flipping around and stuff um it, it does add more to the game compared to other arcade racers that don't have those mechanics or you know someone who doesn't like the simulation games they can pick up rocker racing which is a more arcade racer and you know have some fun with all those mechanics so um again i think rocker racing is a great game for anyone to pick up maybe with a group of friends as well play for a couple of hours and then you know they can come back to it the next day or something um when it comes to how the game is for more serious players or people who want to take it more competitively i think that's when you start to see um, one of the biggest weaknesses for the game um, mainly because there's been um, a lot of complaints about the ranking system about the whole percentage system um, at the very top you have complaints about how the leaderboards work and how in unreal we kind of have this hidden percentage in the backgrounds um, as well as there's no but there's been no talk or confirmation on whether there's ever going to be like any official tournaments or cash cups for uh, rocker racing so right now we're all in the dark to see if this game's ever going to have a competitive scene um, but you know they have I think they're doing such a great job catering to the casual player base. It's really up to the devs. I mean, they could just keep this a casual game forever, um, or they could, you know, try to see if a competitive scene will work. And I hope they do experiment with that because I think if they were to introduce some sort of official competitive scene, then it would bring in uh, a lot of players or maybe some players that have um, already dropped the game, they would come back. So yeah. Um, that's pretty much what I have to say for the strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, I think uh, I think Rocket Racing is a great game for the casual players. I think it's a great game overall. I mean, we're currently sitting in season zero, so it's still early access, if you will, and I'm 
quite looking forward to seeing what happens for season one. Um, hopefully a lot of our wants uh, as at least competitive players are come to fruition at some point. But uh, you're at the top of the leaderboards. You're sitting, I mean, maybe six, four, four, six, somewhere six. out there. You're top six. 10. Um, <clears throat> we went into a lot of key strategies on the last pod, but just if we want to talk about those casual players that are maybe sitting in those diamond elite, something like that, and they want to kind of transition from the casual to the competitive, what are some key strategies that, that kind of, uh, that you've been able to utilize that would also, uh, really resonate with someone that's looking to get to champion or unreal? Yeah. So I'll just talk about some more, uh, like broader strategies that anyone can really, um, take into account and think about um if i were to talk about anything specific it would probably require its own you know video or demonstration or something like that for um sure. but some things to go over just for anyone this would apply to literally anyone that maybe wants to step up their game to the next level um or anyone who's been thinking about these things um first off if anyone's been considering changing their key bindings at all um you know changing their bindings if you're on mouse and keyboard or um, changing them on controller, for instance, or if you're wondering, should I be playing on controller or should I be playing keyboard and mouse, which one's better? Um, my answer to anyone asking about this is to play what's most comfortable to you. Um, so don't worry about if someone says, oh, it's better to have this setting on or this setting off, or you should have your jump button on this you know, bind or whatever. Um, just focus on playing with whatever's comfortable to you um, because that's ultimately going to be uh, able to help you more um, and in the long term um, than changing bindings. Uh, if you do feel like you want to take that extra step and try out these, you know, quote unquote, better or suggested bindings that some of the top players have, feel free, not going to stop you. Um, but I don't want anyone to think that they need to change any bindings or play on keyboard and mouse or controller to be instantly better at the game. Um, so yeah, just continue to play with whatever's most comfortable for you. Um, second off, I'd, like, I'd love to say that if anyone you know hasn't already been um, and you're looking to game, looking to take the game a little more serious, um, please take the time to practice alone um, on tracks that you feel like you struggle on at the very least. Um, and you can this time can be you know 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, whatever you want. Um, but practicing by yourself or maybe you know one-on-one -on -one with a friend or something um, on tracks that you think you're not too familiar with is going to be so helpful in helping you consistently climb through the rankings. Um, I think it's best to be good at all maps um, instead of being excellent at one specific map um, because if you're good at all maps and you'll be able to consistently place a, you know, high in each of your races and you'll be able to climb ranks consistently, and, you know, being good at all tracks, it, they kind of, the skill kind of transfers between each other. Um, there's skills that you can take from Riviera and you can apply it to another map, um, such as like Olympus. I don't know, just two maps, for example. Um, but what I'm getting at is that there is benefit to practicing all maps and getting good at all of them. Um, so if you're able to take the time solo, and you're wanting to do that, I fully encourage it. Um, I would also like to add on that watching high-level players, um, watching their content, whether it's on YouTube or Twitch, um, I think there's great things you can learn just by watching them. You can see how they play. You'll kind of notice some patterns in their play style. Um, and then also you can just you know find out any new shortcuts or any new drift strategies that um, they're using. You can try to apply it to your game as well. Um, and then last thing I'll say about this topic is if you haven't already been, I encourage you to go check out a website called speedrun.com. On there, you can find a rocket racing category and you can look at all the world record times for all the tracks um, in the game. And by watching those world record times, you'll see the shortcuts that they use. You'll see where they're drifting, where they're using their turbo. Um, and these are strategies that people are using in ranked matches. Um, and you can try to learn how to do this yourself, uh, preferably in your, you know, the time that you take to practice solo. And then you can apply these to your ranked matches and you'll have such an advantage on people that aren't doing this. 
So there you go. Those, those are my key strategies. Those are, those are, uh, those are great points and they apply, to, you know, solo practice, I think is very key. Um, even, you know, all the way up, all the way up. I mean, let's face it, the top, the top ranked guys, I mean, we're, we're pretty much grinding solo all the time on different maps that, that we don't feel we're, um, we're as good as we want to be obviously right mm -hmm. or trying to chase down some world records or personal best or something like that so solo practice very key just you know like you said check out that speedrunning.com check out the best routes and take whatever you can and implement them into your gameplay if you're sitting at you know diamond elite champion something like that and you're trying to hit that unreal status then i think that's uh that's very key um how do you view the game's current community? I mean, for the most part in our, in my stream right now, I think the community that we have established is, is very good. How do you view the, the game's community? Yeah, I think the community right now is generally positive. I've seen plenty of people that, you know, are out there trying to encourage others to play the game and encourage others to get better at the game. Um, so there's plenty of people in the community that are looking to help out others, uh, which is great. Um, especially in a game like this, you know, we need people like that. Um, so yeah, generally the community has been very positive. Um, not everyone's perfect though. There's of course, you know, the fair share of bad apples in the community. Um, but in general, it's great. Um, a big part of the community as well um, is you have um, some people that are trying to kind of create um, a makeshift, you know, tourney scene or, you know, competitive scene, um, while Epic and Psionics don't have anything official so far. Um, so I'm very happy that there are people in the community that are looking to try to host, you know, tournaments or try to uh, take the competitive scene to the next level. Um, and I think so far they're doing, a, they're doing a decent job at it. Um, we'll just have to see, you know, how they, uh, handle it going on in the future. So. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I think uh, I think overall the games community is very welcoming for for anyone that's looking to get into the game, and uh, and of course you know pop into my stream, pop into Zix stream. We'll give you all the deets that you need to know in order to uh, to improve and and see what's going on within the game. Last Tuesday, so a week ago, exactly a week ago, Rocket Racing or Epic dropped the first major update to Rocket Racing. Uh, it came with some updated cosmetics. So we all got some trails, uh, some drift trails, I think is what they're calling them, along with some new wheels, as well as a new car, the Endo. We brought uh, a couple new tracks, Lazy Lake 2 and K2 Raceway 2. Um, I think the trails are really cool. The tracks are all right. Hmm. And, uh, and overall, Overall, I think they're. Uh, I think those cosmetic changes are, are wonderful. We can always use more cosmetics. Um, there were some major improvements in terms of uh, and bug fixes. Uh, it says that there is some overall CPU performance, especially on low end devices. Sitting idle will now kick the player back to the lobby, which is nice. Colli car collisions are less severe. That could be up for debate. I think uh, air dodging is now smoother or more magnetic. Um, and the invert steer method, which I think is a big change uh, for people that were having a hard time with the invert steer controls. Um, overall, what uh, what are your thoughts on on the rocket racing update? Yeah, so um, pretty much touched on you know most of the stuff that was in the in the update, um, and I think probably the better parts of the update was all the new cosmetics that they added. Um, the new car, the wheels, drift trails. Um, I think those are great. I think any sort of new cosmetics is going to be good for you know any type of player. Um, so I'm happy to see they're still adding those, and I hope they continue to add them frequently um, in the future. Um, you got thousands of assets, thousands of assets yeah. sitting in Rocket League. Yeah, and um, there there's a lot I could talk about in this update. So I don't want to go off on a whole you know 20 minute 20 minute rant. I'll talk about whatever. You really want to focus on um but um before that the last thing i'll say is that the new maps that they came out with uh, lazy lake 2 and uh k22 um i think that the maps are okay um but i think they are products of map design that i hope they kind of stray away from in the future 
Um, these new maps are they're both sequel maps of maps that have already been in the game. And pretty much all they've done is they've taken those maps and added a bunch of hazards all over the place. They didn't really add any new routes or make it too um, interesting, too different from the previous ones. And so I hope in the future that they try to focus on, if they're ever going to make a sequel map, um, I hope that they really do focus on really changing how the map looks and opening up multiple new routes um, for people to take. And then um, even more so, I hope that they do um, try to make new, unique maps um, in the game. So that is a whole new, fresh experience for everyone. Um, I think that would be great. So yeah, um, like I said, there's plenty I could talk about the update. So if there's anything else you want to talk about specifically, I'll be more than happy to go into detail on that. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, I, I touched on a couple of the a couple of the mechanics, like the air dodge and uh... I think that might have been the only mechanic, really. They said car collisions, but um, how do you think this impact, this update impacts the overall gameplay and competitive scene? Yeah, so I think when it comes to like how mechanics were changed, and I think the biggest one, well, there's actually two big ones. And one of them, people, there's not that many people that know about it. Um, so the first mechanic to talk about is the flipping. Um, and what they've done, what it seems like they've done, is they've really just changed how far away your car can be attracted or attached to a wall. So what I mean by that is <clears throat> whenever you use your dodge button, flipping left, right, up, or down, um, your car will try to attach itself to a surface, um, whichever surface is you know, in its path in the direction that you're flipping. And what it seems like is that now you can be just a little bit farther away than prior to the update and whichever direction you flip, it will try to attach itself to a surface um, that's even farther away now. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, but what I'm getting at is that flipping feels different. And I think it's because of how your car is being attracted to the walls. And something that this has done is it's actually opened up to, it's opened up for the mechanic to be kind of abused um, in the sense that now we can use flipping even more than prior to the update to help us save some time on some tracks. And so what this mechanic is, is we're calling it mag flipping or magnet flipping. Um, and we're basically abusing the animation that the car is taking or, the, or that the car is entering um, whenever you're trying to flip towards a wall we're taking that animation and the speed that you're given with it and we're using that to get through tracks faster and um i think the track it's most prevalent on right now is pleasant pit stop but people have found other places to do this on other maps um so we're just going to be there's, there's going to be more and more spots for this to happen um coming out on tracks in the future and I think the best place for people to see this this happening is in the world record runs. Um, like I said, you can find those on speedrun.com. So keep a look out. You'll see people abusing this new flipping mechanic a little bit. Um, like I said, main map right now it's being used on is Pleasant Pit Stop. Um, other than that mechanic, the other mechanic I love to touch on about is the catch-up mechanic. So not many people know, but catch-up has been nerfed um, after this update. So now you, you get like less speed um, if you're in the back of the pack. You're not able to catch up to the, to the front as easily. And this is something that I'm happy to see they're experimenting with. Um, the, you know, there's pros and cons to doing this. And um, I think we talked about this in the last podcast. You know, catch up is a great thing for casual players. It's a great thing to keep games close and keep them exciting, um, you know, fresh maybe is another word to to go for but um it, it keeps the racing close and i think that's you know probably the one of the biggest reasons to implement a mechanic like catch up um but there is the argument to be had that having something like catch up does negatively affect the competitive integrity of the game because you're giving people who are making mistakes so much leeway and you're not really punishing them for making those mistakes and so now with catch-up being as nerfed as it is, whenever people are making mistakes, especially in these high-level lobbies, um, it, it really hurts because now you 
have even less of a chance of catching up. Um, and, you know, in some of these lobbies, people never do uh, just because of how nerfed it was. And so I think I, I like to see that they're experimenting with this at the very least. Um, I think it's good that they're at least trying it out. Maybe they're probably going to see what people think about it and maybe they'll change it back in the future. Who knows? Um, but you know, we'll have to see if people get used to it and if they're okay with it. So far, I haven't heard too much negativity about it. You know, people are bringing it up. Hey, you know, did you know that ketchup has been nerfed? But I don't really hear people saying, man, I wish it was back to the way it was or anything. Mm-hmm. I think people are generally okay with it and they're just getting used to it. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm with you I, with you there on, in terms of the catch-up mechanic. Um, I said, I think, last time that I was okay with the catch-up mechanic because... I like that clutch factor of the lap three where it really counts. But uh, but overall, I think the catch up was great for a casual experience because it makes the you know, it keeps it fun and interesting the whole time. Uh, I think personally, in my experience, I think the catch up mechanic right now could be dialed up. I don't know, 10 percent or it could be dialed up just a little bit, just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't need it to be anywhere close to what it was before, but it, it seems like right now you're driving around and there's all, almost nothing. I don't know. I haven't experimented too much to see how much it actually is if you're way back in the pack, but um, could be just turned up a little bit. I don't know. I think it would keep the, the competitive games or the games in those lower ranks a little more competitive. But if you only turn it, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm going on a rant now, so I don't know. <laughs> now that the more I think about it, the more I don't know. <laughs> Hey, you have a whole other video talking about just catch up itself. Yeah, so. yeah, true, true. So we touched on the update. I think we can probably agree that both of our favorite additions from the update is cosmetics. I mean, the more cosmetics, yeah. the better. I want to make my car look cool. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So what does the future of rocket racing look like? So looking forward now, what improvements or features do you hope to see in rocket racing season one is coming in i don't know i don't know and i actually have no idea when season one is coming but um it's coming soon at some point in time right yeah so some general you know hopes for the future i guess um this this last update um i think it's shown us that they have the potential to add a fair amount of content in that one update um and i can only expect that whenever season one comes or the start of any season it's probably going to be their biggest drop of content um i hope that in the future with their updates um i hope that they first off take a lot of time to fix any of the bugs that are in the game um there are still a good amount of pretty serious bugs that are kind of plaguing um the gameplay a little bit and so I hope that they do, I hope they're able to identify the causes of those and they're able to patch them up pretty quickly. Um, and I hope they prioritize those over adding any other you know, new content. Um, but I completely understand that there needs to be a steady stream of content coming in, whether it's cosmetics, new maps, new cars, whatever it is. Um, and so I hope they can keep that up at a steady pace as well. Um, season one, like you brought up, I think the estimated time that you can expect season one to start is early March. That's because that's when the current battle pass ends. So I can only expect when the next battle pass starts, it's going to be around that time. Um, yep. And season one's going to come with it. Um, and, you know, season one, we're going to be getting, we can expect to get um, in game speed run leaderboards um, and uh, in game track creator. Those are probably the two biggest um, content updates that they have already confirmed is coming in the future. And I can pretty much guarantee you that both of those will bring in either new players or bring back players that have already since uh, dropped the game, Um, especially the in-game track creator. I've heard a lot of people are looking forward to spending a lot of time on that. And so having big content drops like this um, is going to be great for the game, Um, again, and, and for the player base as well. And so I hope that when they do release these, it's a smooth launch. I hope it doesn't bring any more, you know, bugs to the game and I hope everyone can enjoy them. Um, for maps themselves, kind of brought this up earlier. I hope they, they bring in more new unique maps and not just sequel maps. Um, but at the same time, you know, to be honest, we already have 28 maps total now after this last update. 
Um, it's a pretty healthy amount, but at the same time, because of how many, because of how much some people have played the game already, kind of me included, we're kind of getting a little bored of these maps now. Um, but you know, let's be real. All the people here at the top, we've spent so much time, more than a lot of casual players are going to be. There's probably plenty of people that aren't even close to being bored of these maps yet. They have so much to play with. Um, so, you know, they don't need to rush on maps. <laughs> I mean, we are the, you know, 0.1% or whatever, whatever it is that, you know, is just absolutely grinding the absolute crap out of the game to, uh, to get to the point where the maps seem, I don't mm. think the maps are boring. It just, you know, I would like to see a little something new. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, there's so many different directions that you can go in in terms of the settings of the maps, how the maps are designed. There's just like there's just unlimited capabilities or possibilities, and yeah. uh, and I think I think there's a few people that are going to really bring out the uh, the best of the community with these with the in-game track editor or creator or whatever you want to call it. Hmm. Um, I know that Fortnite in general drops an update like every kind of Tuesday. Yeah, today's Tuesday, right? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, day of this recording. Yes, yeah, so the day of this recording is Tuesday. So there was a there was an update today, and I think they generally update the game every every week on Tuesday. Now that they've got back to the office, so I'm hopeful that maybe they can iron out a couple of those bugs before the the major drop happens for season one or the next season, whatever that that is that they call it. So hmm. hopefully, I mean, there's just so much potential with the game, right? There's so many different directions you can go if you can you can you know take stuff from track mania even stuff like uh like mario kart where you can have cups where you can bundle a few races together so you don't need to back out to the main menu every time you just keep a party together and, and get that point structure which i think is pretty cool which is kind of what you know we've done in or not not us but the community is done in terms of making a competitive scene mm -hmm. um where do you see the potential of the game yeah, so I think you know the game has a lot of potential, um, kind of like you said. So I think there's, you know, plenty of ways they, they, that they could take this, and there's plenty of different types of content that they can add. Um, the you know, the route that I hope they go down the most is a route that leads to an official competitive scene, um, because I think that is something that I would love to partake to to partake in, and I think it would bring in a lot of players as well. Um, however, there is so much potential to keep the game casual focused um, by adding in, you know, new game modes, maybe doing some more stuff like Mario Kart. Maybe you can add in items for people to use in races. You know, there is a lot of paths that they can take. And I can't just sit here and be solely focused on like, oh, man, I hope that they, you know, take this game very seriously and come up with a competitive scene and blah, 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 blah. No, nah, I like I want to. Like here, I want to say that, like you know, I want to look at the game from kind of a neutral perspective. Apologies for the alarm, um, if you heard that. Uh, but you know, there is plenty of things they can do that can cater that can cater to um, multiple different audiences and different audiences all at once. So we'll have to see what they do. But yeah, game has a lot of potential. I think it'll be great. Yeah, bring it on. Bring bring on items, bring on racing on the moon, whatever it is. I mean, I think uh potential is endless and we're the people that have played the game a lot are hungry for anything. Just drop us, just give us a little little taste of something else. But uh but the game is overall it is a good game. Uh we've talked on we've talked about a lot of negative things that are that are impacting our experience at the top, but uh but don't get it mistaken. The, those negative, um, those negative. It's not a negative mindset. It's just a critical mindset. It comes from a place of passion. You know, we're passionate about rock and racing. Mm. Uh, we love the game, and we would like to see it, you know, thrive and do well and bring more players in, and uh, and ultimately, hopefully, we like it to lead to a competitive scene. But but you know, more content is always welcome. So I think I think we agree on that, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. Any criticisms that I pretty much have in the game, it's because you know I want to see it improved, and you know I want the game to have a good, positive future. So, yeah. That uh, that's a little wrap on our on our podcast here. Uh, Zick, 
does have a channel and he streams. And if you'd like to promote that right now, be my guest. Yeah, sure. So right now, the main place that people can find me um, playing the game would be on Twitch, uh, twitch.com slash zik7u8. Um, I'm streaming pretty much every night um, at 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, I believe. I usually stream for a few hours at the very least. Um, I don't have like a full set schedule right now, but I've been pretty consistent recently, so people can find me on there. Um, and then as well as I do have a YouTube channel, I don't post consistently or um, on my YouTube channel. Right now I'm kind of just using it as a platform to post any you know, any good personal best or world records that I get. Um, but I do have ideas of what I want to do um, for YouTube content creation in the future. So at the very least, you can maybe expect something coming from me in the coming months, um, especially if this game continues to perform well, um, then you know you can expect more from me. But yeah, right now, main place you can find me is on Twitch. Yeah, so get over there, you know, give him a follow, subscribe on YouTube to our boy Zick. And uh, and here's here's your itinerary for the day. This is the dream rocket racing day. You wake up at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You come check out Blair Z stream. You go have a little bit of dinner, have a bite to eat, get some rest, and then 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Right? 10? That's what it is? 10? Yep. 10. 10, you go check out Zick on Twitch, and you got your whole day covered, Rocket Racing. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, people. Right? You can so, fall asleep to the sound of the Rocket Racing engines exactly. as I drive around Riviera for four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, sub four. Don't, don't get it right. mistaken. Yeah. Um, but that is a wrap on the pod. So thank you, Zick, for coming on. Appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. What are you doing? Uh, we're going to try to get, you know, more person at more rocket racing personalities or high level players on the pod in air quotes. Um, so if you enjoyed this, make sure you again, hit the like button, but make sure you leave a comment. Let me know who you, who you like to see on the pod in the future. Um, what you'd like to see the direction of this content to go in. Um, it's very new and, uh, and this is only a second one. So. I have a little couple things lined up, but please make sure that uh, that you stay tuned. Bell notification on, both for myself and for Zick, obviously. And um, please check out the Discord. We got a lot of things going on in the Discord, um, so please, please, please stop in there. We got a lot of things coming. Speed run leaderboard within our community, tournaments coming, one v ones happening. A lot of things coming, so make sure you're in there and you're checking that out. Uh, Zick, any last words? Nothing for me, man. Just thank you so much for having me here. And uh, let's hope for a great future, great, bright future for Rocket Racing. You're welcome. That's a wrap, everybody. Stay safe. Peace.